So this is going to be an example of um, taking something that's got quite a lot of geometry, which would be considered our high poly. If you look, there's kind of a lot of uh, active points here. Take it into Maya and turn it into something that's workable that we can draw some geometry on top of. So that's going to involve things like um, decimation and GPU caching, if you're not familiar with those. So taking this um, as an example is a baby that I've been working on. Just going to use the head as an example. Um, if we go into Z plugins and decimation master, got a couple of options here. There's pre-process and decimate current. They're usually focused on uh, large projects uh, at the bottom with the newest features as uh, presets. So it's kind of going to like target the decimation at a certain amount of polygons. Um, 250 is pretty good for normal retopology um, things. So if I click 250, let's see what that kind of comes out with. So the decimations happened. It's done a pretty good job so you can see um, all the details that are still there. If you press Shift F, that's going to bring up uh, something called polyframes. So you can just preview what it kind of looks like. That's a perfectly good guide. We can see um, where we try and like strategically put certain edge loops and things like that. So once I'm happy with it, and I can see that it's around a uh, quarter of a mil, I'm going to come up into um, Z plugins and use the FBX export import. You're probably used to using um, export and import up here. That's more specifically for OBJs, but FBX is a little bit more stable, um, especially across university computers. So coming to FBX export, I'm going to just have selected. So that means in the subtool palettes uh, where I've just got the head. So into, into selected FBX export, and then I'm going to click the export button. Uh, I'm just going to put it on to the desktop in this example, call it a guide mesh because that's what it's going to be. Coming into uh, Maya, going to come up into file import, navigate to the file, guide import. Now, depending on uh, the strength and power of your computer, my doesn't really like holding a lot of polygons in comparison to ZBrush, where it's really used to having like 40 mil polygons. My really starts to tank around about 10. Um, so this might take a little bit of time. Cool, there it is. So once this is in, we can come into um, the cache up here, something called GPU cache. If you can't see the GPU cache selected, um, you want to be going into Windows, Setting and Preferences, and the Plugin Manager. Sometimes things are uh, unchecked, so if we open up the Plugin Manager and type in something like um, a cache, you can see in my case that uh, GPU cache is all loaded and auto-loaded. If yours didn't show up, the chances are that that was unticked, so just double-check those. So that being said, um, coming towards the cache, towards GPU cache, we're going to export a GPU cache as an actual file and then import it back into the scene. So with export selection, with the Yoda, Yoda head selection, uh, again, back onto the desktop, I'm just gonna call it uh, GPU guide this time. Since the GPU cache has been exported, the next stage one do, is re-import that GPU cache. So going to the cache, GPU cache, and then import. Navigate to the file, which is guide GPU guide. Uh, import this. And you can see this come in. Um, over in the outliner, so if you don't have the outliner, it's this little button here, which just indicates what sort of objects are in the scene. Um, it's a little bit different to normal. Probably what you've seen is this kind of like green thunderbolt just to indicate that it's a GPU guide, not actual geometry. So GPU guides and caches work a little bit differently. Um, it enables all the my functionality, but doesn't necessarily have to render all the polygons on the screen. It's all really complicated and cool, um, basically meaning that it's not going to crash your computer and it works a little bit better. Um, so approaching a normal retopology task, 
the first thing you want to do is make this called something a live surface so up here there's a little magnet and if we click that it means it's going to turn it into a live surface so it's indicated here so all the transform constraints every sort of transform we're going to do is going to snap onto this surface uh, up here you can see that it's indicated that it's all connected so once that's all started um, we want to come up to here into some tools it's just this little cube with the hammer um, opening that up got things like multi-cut target weld which you've used before uh, this time we're going to be using quadral so quadral is just drawing on top of our life surface so activating quadral now once that's activated um, a new object hasn't been created but upon the first sort of verse that you start to build it's going to create a new object so with quad drawing um, it's as simple as clicking on the surface a couple of times and that's going to make some vertices if you want to fill that vertice uh, quad in if you hold shift and then in the center just click once that's going to create a new polygon uh, so the thing to note is once that polygon's created it's actually made uh, a new polygon surface here so that's our new object we now consider that our low poly start um, what I want to do and for the sake of management is just rename this straight away because it can get kind of confusing um, so if I come here into the outline and double click and just call this low poly or something along those lines um, still in quad mode so we can still start to use it the next uh, way of sort of building up topology from here if you look and you hover over you can select things like edges and vertices um, we can continue to draw uh, out our geometry and then just filling it in with shift there's some other functionality so if you're holding tab so tab is the button above the caps lock if you hold that you can see that the mouse turns to something called extrude so whenever we're hovering over an edge we can start to drag more topology out um, and the same is true for vertices so if you're on a vertices it kind of has this elastic band effect uh, and then you can start forming the low poly obviously there's uh, a bit of a strategy when it comes to making geometry so with characters we're looking at loops uh, if you saw there I just deleted a couple of things that's just by pressing control and shift so we can add and start to remove certain bits of geometry so with an eye loop for example um, you can lay out the strategy for your eye loop so start like this every artist likes to work differently you can fill them in like that or you can start with one polygon and decide just to drag them in one by one and then adjusting all the verts and things like that one feature as well is if you do have a gap we can press shift and that's going to bridge it so it's the same sort of thing and also we've got integrated merge functionality so if we're going to extrude something out like this and say we want these verts to connect together it's going to be as simple as selecting that vert and then placing it on top of the other one so there's a certain snap raise that's going to happen and then those verts are going to snap together um, something to note as well is how to manage being in both of the modes so right now we've toggled quad draw on um, and that is with the low poly selected so if I wanted to come out and make some actual my changes I can either click here to deactivate the quad draw or I could press Q so Q comes back into normal my functionality you'll see that it's come out of quad because that blue kind of indicators vanished now if you wanted to reactivate this and come back into quad mode we would have to select the low poly first and this is important so you select in the low poly first and then we can click quad draw and it comes back in um, there might be a case where you have also unselected the guide so quad draw only works if there is a guide selected so let's go into that scenario so I'm clicking quad draw and we don't have a guide so you might have this sort of scene now if you want to come back into your retology you'd have to first uh, add the guide so select the guide come to make live and then we're going to select the low poly and this is where the naming comes in really useful imagine having kind of a, a really big scene it's, it's nice to have that naming convention so the guide's activated we've selected the low poly and now we can come to quad draw and that brings everything back together so some notes I guess on quad draw you can do multiple objects at the same time you can do one big large surface um, you can do half of a face and then decide to mirror it later 
or you can have symmetry on and do both of the sides at the same time. Um, there's a lot, a lot of options. Um, I was just thinking before finishing, I want to show one additional thing that can be useful for kind of like larger projects, and that's putting things into layers. So with layers, um, we can, for example, put all our guides in one layer and all our low polys in one layer. It means that, say, for example, we don't want to see this guide at the current time and just see our low poly. Maybe it's for some feedback or things like that. It's going to be really easy to switch between them instead of hiding them all individually and things like that. So coming out of quad draw, um, I'm going to come top right and you can see this kind of like stack of papers show high channel box. Um, with that open, uh, there's something down here with the display. You can see layers and a couple of layer addition options. Um, so if the first layer I'm going to create is the guide layer. So with the GPU cache uh, selected, I can come over to this little button and it says create new layer and assign selected object. So we're going to do that. So what it's done, it's created a new layer and it's put the selections that we had into that layer. You can double click and rename that layer. So I'm going to call it guides. Now there's a couple of features that you can now use. So there's this V that basically means visibility. So you can hide and show it. Um, there's another one over here, which is uh, rendering. So with the R selected in this little box, it means that you can't click the actual thing. It's only going to be rendered on screen, not active. Um, so we're basically going to do that for each selection. So now we're going to do it for the low poly. Same process as selecting the objects that you want to put into it. Um, coming into the create new layer with the sign selected objects. Create that, always renaming it. It's a good habit to get into. Uh, low poly. Ah. Low poly underscore layer. Um, that's an interesting thing. In Maya, Maya's naming conventions, it doesn't like naming similar things, whether it's an object or a material, they can't share the same names. Um, so sometimes you have to name it something different. So in this case, it's just low poly underscore layer because we already have something called low poly. That's just how Maya likes to work. So save that. Um, and now we can independently hide and show certain things. Um, if you're making more guides, so more GPU caches, or you're making more low poly, more, more low poly things, um, you can right click on the layer with the thing selected and you can add selected objects back into that layer or remove the selected objects. So you can start to see how um, you can manage retopology tasks by approaching it um, with a good process, putting things into layers, naming them correctly, and starting to retop individual assets and components. So it's all about scene management and constructing your, your sort of layers. Um, so that's the basis of how you set up a project for retopology. And um, the rest is kind of copying examples and getting used to forming some some topology so that kind of concludes it